Okay, so the title of this video is a little bit mislabeled, but there was no other way that I could kind of come up with a title that's going to explain briefly what it is we're going to be doing within grain that is going to be similar to slicing. We are going to be taking bits of audio and using grain to basically time it to the tempo and beat within our song in a pretty straightforward way. And uh, what I'm going to show you can be used to really, I think, help you get the creative juices flowing and you can find uh, bits or samples from songs that can really uh, get you up and running with a track in a relatively short period of time. So what I've got here to start is just a Kong. That's all I've got in here. And if I F7 to come to the sequencer, we can see that I have a four bar drum loop. I'll just go ahead and press one to come to the beginning of the loop and play this back real quick. Okay, so just a really basic drum beat, just so that I can uh, show you this example of what we're gonna be doing in grain uh, of six and come back to the rack. And then over in our browser, I will come to the grain and just bring that in. And I'm going to right click on the device and reset that. So we are taking all the parameters to their default positions and clearing out our audio sample. And this is the point where you want to, if you have a particular song that you want to sample from, even if you don't have an idea from the song, you, this method kind of, you can take a song, you know, you have to worry about copyright stuff, but it doesn't even have to be a song, it could be anything. Uh, just navigate to that. So I'm gonna come to the folder here to browse for a sample. And I wanna come to my sounds, field samples, voice singing, and I'm just gonna choose this here, stop that playback. I'm just gonna drag that into our sample overview area. Now this is a bit of a longer song. I think it may even be about six minutes long, so it may be a little bit difficult to manage, but uh, anyhow, you'll get the point. Now the first thing that we wanna do, what are the settings in order to get this right? First, for the motion, we're gonna set that to one shot. Now, for the algorithm that we're gonna be using, we can use any of these, but we're gonna start with tape here. This is gonna be more in line with the traditional sampling using like an MPC or something where we don't wanna change the timbre of the sound uh, or the color of it rather, but we, we're gonna be changing the pitch. And actually, I uh, lied to you. We don't want one shot, this is important. What we want is envelope one. So we'll set that there. And then this is our envelope one. You just wanna be sure that you have that selected. And this ramp up is just perfect for what we're gonna do. We then want to turn the beat sync on. And what this does is it tells the envelope to match up or sync up with our song tempo, which is currently 120 beats per minute. Now, when we activate beat sync, Notice here, this is in seconds. But when we activate, this is gonna be in basically three eighths, four, four, half a bar, one bar. We have a variety of choices that we can make. Three bar, four, all the way up to eight bars. So what this is essentially doing is telling Grain to play back whatever we have between our start and end marker over this period of time matched up with our song tempo. So I'm going to, the first thing to keep in mind here is that when you adjust the start and end markers, it is going to pitch up, pitch down, or slow or, slow or speed up your sample, right? Because it's gonna have to make it work within the designated period of time that we have set here. Now I'm gonna set this to, uh, two bars just to start with. And we've got an area selected here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trigger this with my keyboard controller. And let's hear how this sounds with, I haven't tried this out before uh, with this particular setup, so. Okay, so we have the chipmunk going on and the reason why that is is because 
we've chosen a very or a longer area to play back or over a relatively short period of time. Now, if I move this end marker in, you'll notice it's going to be pitched down. So you can see um, grain is, you know, calculating how fast or slow it needs to play back a particular part based on our two bar setting. So we want our sample that we're choosing in between our start and end markers to play back over a two bar period. And it makes the calculation for the pitch. So if I were to change this to four bars, then you can imagine it's going to slow it back down again, right? Okay, uh, so let's... I'm going to go ahead and press the spacebar to start playback of our little beat. Now for this creative experimentation, you can come to the sample overview area here and we see our brackets. This is in between the brackets is what we have shown here. Now we can just, if we want to play around with different samples, we can just come here and drag, see what else, what something else sounds in there. And I'm going to take this up to two bars. Okay, I'm going to come and choose another part. Now I just sent this sample to the uh, high pass filter here to take out some of the lows in there. Now, now one thing that is a little bit frustrating is uh, we have this loop available to us here. And if I activate this, then what I've been doing is just re-triggering and trying to time this right because I'm using my built-in audio and it's hard to trigger it right on time. Um, and actually I should have had key trig on. So that's another thing here is set the key trig on. But what would be awesome is if we could activate this loop here that I just turned on. And then I can just hold the key down then it's going to automatically loop this over and over and then I can scroll through and find what I'd like to use. But unfortunately there's a pop usually here and the loop crossfade won't fix that. And I actually emailed Propellerheads about it. Um, it only happens on the tape. So maybe that's just, you know, they're trying to be true to what a tape would do in, in the real world or whatever. But it doesn't happen on any of the al other algorithms, but these other ones will change the timbre of your sound. So I've activated the loop and I'm just going to hold the key down and not release it. And I'm going to let it loop and you can see how this works in that way.
Okay, so you could probably hear that pop, but if I if I change the algorithm to say spectral grains. Let me get on the beat here. And with the uh, spectral grains, we actually can play different pitches and it will adjust for the sample. I'm just not triggering on the beat is why it's it's a little off there, but you get the idea. And if I come to the um, grain oscillator, this may sound a little bit funky. Yeah, that's not what we want. Um, we've got long grains. Okay, so you can see where we're going with this. The timing is a bit off because I have latency as far as when I'm triggering this to start on the beat. But you know the, the you get the general idea here and how you can experiment. The speed does not work when you're doing, uh, when you have envelope as set to the playback speed. I think the jitter does still work, but um, you know, we're using the envelope to determine how quickly or slowly this is going to play back. And we want it to sync up to our beat. And you can see how you can adjust the bars there. You can see how you can use the loop. More specifically with the spectral and long grains. The uh, tape is best to re-trigger at the beginning of each. If you have two bars, then just put in a MIDI note at the beginning of the first one. And then... Uh, go through the two bars, put in another trigger, and that way you can alleviate that popping sound by just being sure that you re-trigger each time instead of uh, having it loop if you're going to use the tape mode. Okay, and so I just wanted to come on and give this little creative tip for working with samples within Reason 10's grain. <laughs>